This talk today um, is going to be about the senior project I did uh, as sort of a, a thesis, a capstone project for my undergraduate degree. The basic idea of this project was to uh, take the Mayan script, digitize it, uh, or digitize some portion of it, and create a computer program that accepts a phonetic uh, Latin script input and outputs Mayan glyphs. Part of my time at CUA, I took part in their uh, Yucatan Spanish immersion program. I returned in uh, the winter of 2019 to stay in the home of uh, Don Crisanto Kumulchan, you can see here. Um, in his, he lives in a very small village called Sispilchen, uh, which again is in the Yucatan. Um, it's a very small Mayan village. Uh, everyone there speaks primarily Mayan, um, and Spanish is, is much more of a secondary language. A little bit about Don Crisanto. Um, Don Crisanto is a very fascinating individual. He grew up in this very small, very rural village, and he graduated from the Universidad de Oriente de Valladolid in uh, 2014 with a master's in ethnography and intercultural uh, Mayan education. And he returned to his village um, and teaches at the local school, um, he teaches elementary school, and he runs a program um, which I believe is unique in the world in which he teaches Mayan glyphs to Mayan children. Um, and for this, he has gained a lot of respect uh, in his village and all the surrounding villages. And to sort of understand how, why this is unique and what's interesting about this, we have to go back and talk a little bit about the history of the Mayan language and of the Mayan script. So here we have a mural uh, by Fernando Castro Pacheco um, of Friar Diego de Landa. So uh, I'm sure you're all aware of the Spanish conquest of Mexico and uh, of, of the general region, um, but eventually it did fall to the Spanish conquest. Um, and, and so Friar Diego de Landa was sent, um, he's a friar of the Franciscan order, um, he was a friar, um, and he was sent with the express purpose of converting the native population, um, and he was in charge of the, the Yucatan region. So the Mayan were very, very, very um, active writers. They wrote uh, thousands of, of books um, on a variety of different subjects, uh, and he uh, saw these as purely devil-worshipping nonsense. Um, and so he collected as many of them as he could um, all across the region. He threw them in a pile and he lit them on fire. The vast majority of Mayan writings were lost. Um, and as far as we know, only three, possibly four books, Mayan books survived despite thousands being written. Um, those three books are in uh, Madrid, in Spain, Paris, France, and Dresden, Germany. Um, they were the only, the, they're the last three remnants of uh, the Mayan literature. Um, and with these book burnings and various other actions, all knowledge of how to read and write in the Mayan script was lost. Um, and for hundreds of years, nobody could uh, understand uh, whatever remnants of the script were left. So that takes us back to Don Crisanto and his, his work, his school. Uh, so this is him teaching his after-school program called Tumbin Sasil, uh, which means uh, a new light in Mayan. Um, so Mayan, despite the intentions of the Spanish and later of the Mexican government to eradicate the Mayan language. Despite those efforts, the Mayan language uh, survived. The Mayan culture very flourishes to today. Uh, and there are about a million native Mayan speakers in uh, southern Mexico and northern Central America. 
Don Crisanto in his work to teach this script to a new generation, uh, he is bridging a gap between a 400 year gap between the loss of this script and the present day. All glyphs that are created more or less have to be handwritten um, and they're somewhat complicated. It takes quite a long time. So the generation of new glyphs and new glyph literature is very difficult. It's very slow. And so in watching him teach his students how to do this, uh, I, as a, as, a, as, an, as, some, as a young person who is raised in the era of internet and electronics, I immediately was like, oh, well, it'd be so much easier to just have a computer do this, wouldn't it? Um, you, could, you could type things in, the computer could generate the glyphs. Now, would, if you wanted to create um, art, that would help you uh, go through the process of transcriptions. You'd know what to draw uh, and you can make, you, make it happen faster that way. Or if you're trying to produce literature, um, you could very quickly produce uh, long text without having to write them out by hand, which is obviously not a particularly efficient thing. The second issue is that though he's teaching these children to read and write in glyphs, there isn't really much or anything for them to read. Um, and as I'm sure you're all aware, it's very difficult to learn something when there's almost no way for you to practice it. So that was sort of the, the genesis, the idea, where the idea of my program came from. So, how does the Mayan script work? You can see here, there are two examples of, historic examples of the Mayan script. On the left, you have a stella. Um, so these are stone blocks that were left generally in the middle of cities or villages in like the town square in front of monuments. Um, and they're just stone pillars with writing on them that commemorate some historic events. And on the right, this is an example of one of the three texts, the three books that still exist. This is a Dresden Codex. Um, you can see each of these individual blocks. This is a glyph block, mine glyph block, and each individual one is a word. They are read top left to bottom right, just like in English, however, they're read in columns of two. Uh, so this would be read one, two, three, four, five, six. The Mayan script is actually phonetic. Um, it's written out uh, where symbols represent sounds that are constructed, that are put together to create words. And more specifically, it's syllabic. Um, so each uh, individual glyph represents a consonant vowel or a standalone vowel um, combination, and those are used to create words. The interior glyphs, these are called uh, syllable glyphs that, that form glyph blocks. However, there are also things called logograms, uh, where a single glyph does in fact represent a word. So it's not a phonetic representation, it's a direct representation. 95 distinct consonant vowel sounds, and then five distinct uh, vowel sounds for a total of about 100. Uh, vocalizations within, within the language. Um, you can see here, this is an apostrophe. Um, this stands for a glottal stop. It's, it's less of a sound and more of a, like a swallowing of a sound. It's very common in, in Arabic and a few other languages. Um, and there's quite a few of them within, within the Mayan structure. The first step for me creating a program that could uh, transcribe into glyphs was that I needed to digitize said script, uh, said, said glyphs. Um, so you can see here, this is a subset of the glyphs that I drew into my computer, um, digitized uh, that the, for the program to use to create these glyph blocks. The program, once it had uh, this body of glyphs to work with, um, I needed it to accept input and then it needs to create a glyph. So how does it do that? Um, so you start with the input. This is Tumben Kiana. This means um, a new day. Uh, so this is in a form that the computer does not understand. Um, the spelling rules using the Latin script um, are not the same as the spelling rules using the Mayan script. So the first thing it needs to do is it needs to deconstruct uh, 
this input into the uh, the phonetic syllabic symbols um, that uh, that make it up components, not symbols that make it up. So you can see here, tu mi bi ni ki i na a. These are the syllables that together write Tumbinkiana in Mayan, in the Mayan script. So the computer, it first breaks the input apart into the symbols, sorry, uh, the, in, into the symbols that make it up. And then it goes into the database that I created. It selects um, the, 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 the images necessary and it puts them together. So you can see here, this is tu, mi, bi, ni, ki, i, na, a. As sort of the capstone of the whole project, I turned it into this. So this is a poem, Koshchun, uh, uh, by Don Feliciano Sanchez Chan. And I, as the sort of capstone of my project, I used this, this program to transcribe his poem. And I believe that this is the first piece of uh, glyph, of novel glyph literature to be produced in 400 years. You'll actually, there, there's a few interesting things in here. You can see that there's blank squares. Um, this is what the program outputs when it doesn't have, um, when it doesn't know the glyph that it needs. And again, that that's back to the fact that we have not fully transcribed, uh, haven't fully decoded the original script. Um, so there's still gaps within the program. Yeah, so that uh, was the capstone of the project and sort of represents where the program has gotten to at this point. Um, it was a, a very successful proof that the Mayan language can be digitized, um, that a program has the capacity to sort through the language and uh, and uh, transcribe into glyphs. Um, but there are a lot of next steps. The, the, this program is very much in, in its baby form. I wanna thank you all for attending uh, this presentation. I of course wanna thank our speaker, Tommy Witten. And uh, I wanna especially thank Dr. Jill Robbins, our chief technology officer who made all this possible.